A warning not to party in large groups this weekend before stricter coronavirus rules come into force. As many flock to pubs, the Police Federation warns it's incredibly irresponsible to gather in large groups. But will anyone listen? Good evening. The lockdown in England could last longer than four weeks. The Cabinet Office Minister Michael Gove said if infection rates don't fall, the tough new national restrictions may need to be extended. Yesterday, the Prime Minister said he expected the measures to be lifted at the start of December. But Labour says unless the government improves the track and trace system, that won't happen. Well, tomorrow, Boris Johnson will make a statement to the House of Commons to try to convince his opponents that his plan will work. Our political correspondent, Romilly Weeks, reports. Good evening. Welcome to Dr. Ranj on call. Obviously, everyone's talking about coronavirus, so I'll be answering some of your questions a bit later. Of course, there are other illnesses you really need to be aware of. Yes, and one of the big ones is sepsis, and Ranj will be telling you about the signs and symptoms shortly. Plus, we've got all of this. Five year old with a Lucas, do you want to hold this? No, exactly. <laughs> with Lucas clearly in need of a hearty meal, I want to find out from Andrew where he sees his pioneering work going next. It looks like there'll be an ability to do 3D printing of tissue, so people are certainly attempting to do 3D printing of skin grafts and those sorts of things at the moment, and kind of that will take us forward in that, that direction. That just sounds mind blowing, doesn't it? You'll actually be able to potentially print out something that's put into the body. Yeah, and actually I think ultimately you may be able to print a heart um, with the tissues as they develop. So I'll see you in five years to talk about that? Maybe. Maybe ten. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, I hope it goes really well. Thank you very nice much to indeed. Meet you. The surgery is now taking place as you can see and Barry's over there in the corner. He's operating Versius. I'm speaking quite quietly because they're obviously all concentrating on what's going on here. So impressive. I know, and just an update on Peter for you. He's recovering well and he said that his scars are smaller than he expected. He still has some chemotherapy to go, but he's already back on his feet. That's great news. I'm so pleased. Now, coming up, the truth around blood donation. And if you're concerned over a friend's mental health, we've got some useful advice for you. Good evening. ITV News has learned the government will announce sweeping reforms in the coming days for students in England taking A-level and GCSE exams in the spring. With the coronavirus causing chaos in classrooms across the country, some have called for the tests to be scrapped altogether. But the government disagrees and is considering allowing books into some assessments and giving students a better idea of the topics that will be tested. Our correspondent John Ray has the details. And John joins me. So stakes high for the students and the government too. Yeah, you've got to remember, I think, the meltdown of last summer, the council. The latest figures released by the government show another 12,155 people have tested positive for coronavirus in the last 24 hours. There have been a further 215 deaths. That's almost 200 fewer than last Sunday. Meanwhile, a row over the new tier system in England is continuing to create problems for the Prime Minister. Our political correspondent Daniel Hewitt is at Downing Street for us this evening. So Daniel, talk us through what's happened. You join me live here at the control room in Portishead for Avon and Somerset Police. Now the team you can see around me are responding to 999 calls tonight as we speak. Now this evening we dedicate our whole programme to policing and the effects of budget cuts on the force. And you'll see the uh, daytime report from Richard Payne in a few minutes' time. Well, as you can see, we're in the police car now. We are heading to Clevedon. We're being driven very competently by Jason in the front seat there. Um, now, I have to say this is the first time we've ever broadcast live from a police car, so please forgive us if sometimes the signal is a little bit patchy. Uh, next to me is the most senior police officer in the force. It's Andy Marsh. Uh, Andy, thanks very much for joining me. We heard from a, a, one of your officers there saying that the force is at breaking point. Is it at breaking point tonight? You've been in charge since 2011. This has all happened under your watch. Are you going to resign tonight? OK, I do wonder then what would make you resign, because it doesn't get much more damning than this report, does it? I mean, you've obviously read it. I've been a journalist for, for 18 years. I don't think I've ever read a report as damning as this, where the person responsible, that's you, hasn't resigned. It's difficult for people, isn't it, to come to food banks. Nobody wants to come to a food bank and they don't want to talk about it. So I guess it maybe is it sometimes your job is a bit of reassurance. That's right. Sometimes they come in very, very embarrassed. But yes, 
everybody who comes is welcomed with, with a cuppa and a chat if they want, or just if they want to wait for their food, they're yeah. welcome to do that too. Well, you're all doing a brilliant job. Thank you so much. Um, of course, it's not um, only, only food that's an issue, but if, if you don't eat the right food and you're not eating enough of it, then there can be serious health effects, and doctors are worried about that. Our correspondent, Hannah Thomas, is in Port for us this evening. Hannah, what are doctors there saying? Former Work and Pensions Secretary, who grew up with a mum who was on benefits. Uh, he joins me now from Westminster. Thank you very much for joining me this evening, Mr Crabb. Now, you know um, better than most what life is like when you're struggling to make ends meet. You're in a priv privileged uh, position now to make a difference. What are you doing? Yeah, I, um, I actually checked the uh, Hansard records earlier. That, that's uh, the record of everything said in Parliament. Correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, but I don't think you've mentioned food banks since 2016. For those people who are using food banks, they need you to be acting right now to change this situation. Tonight, after tens of thousands of people took part in Black Lives Matter protests, a special programme on why racism still divides communities across our region. Making history by erasing the past, protesters in Bristol bring down the statue of slave trader Edward Colston, making headlines across the world and sparking fierce debate. Well, I can speak live now to Bristol Mayor Marvin Rees. Uh, Marvin Rees, you've done an awful lot of interviews today on TV and radio. I just want to begin by asking you how you feel today about what happened yesterday. You're, you're the mayor of Bristol, of course. You're a black man. There's a statue of a slave trader in the city where you're mayor. Why did it take protesters with ropes to pull it down and not you in a position of power? Ben McGrail with that report there. Um, now, what better place to go when it's cold and we're outside but to the local pub? And here we are. We've actually come outside because we can't get a signal inside, probably because of the weather. Anton, it's your pub. Um, you've been lovely to us today. Thank oh, you very much. Um, and you're also making sure that everyone's all right in, the, in, in Longford, aren't you? It's a time for us to uh, sort our community and look after our locals because they're all nice people. Yeah. Um, and it's just not fair. I, I mean, think one thing that someone said to me earlier that's quite interesting, it's not the fact that you you can or can't get your car down. No. The problem is where the water goes when you drive yeah. through it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's it for tonight. Next week, Range is back out with a West Midlands ambulance service, and we'll see how 3D printing could be used to create human organs. If you have a question, do please email us or use the hashtag.